It's another week of the Pack the Rock podcast this week. It's the final episode of our group meeting. It's me, Dylan Traeger, joined by Liv Clements and Noel Ferry. We have a jam-packed episode this week. Let's start off with rating a few of the players. Uh, first, let's go into Taven Jackson. Do you guys want to start? Yeah. Um, I think it's interesting with Taven because you're kind of rating him off a half of a season going battling with somebody else. Um, so I think with, with his rating, it was going to be interesting no matter what. I mean, you finished the season 914 passing yards, 60% completion, which I feel like is pretty solid, um, but only two touchdowns and five interceptions. Um, but I still feel like with him, there's a lot to look forward to. I think he doesn't need to base anything off stats and ratings. I don't think this really even feels like a true season for him. Um, so I feel like for him, honestly, I'd put this season like on the back burner. What's your what's your letter grade for him? I would give him a solid B minus. Considering the circumstances he was in, okay, considering the circumstances he was in, competing, going back and forth, battling, he didn't do too well when he had the battling position. When he started, he did better. You could tell there was confidence there. But I think given t- what he was handed, um, there was no way for him to get higher than that. Yeah. Uh, in terms of Taven Jackson— you go into it battling for, you know, that starting position and then hypothetically or supposedly he wins it. Taven's the one that comes away mm-hmm. with that starting position and he gets a few starts over the next few games uh, to then go and lose that starting position after you quote unquote won that. That is not a, uh, a very good sign for how you did in the season. I think uh, some of those interceptions were really, really tough. Now, the the break that I'll give him is that, you know, he, he was still dealing with, you know, a tough offensive coordinator situation. Honestly, my, my letter grade for him, that Louisville game is keeping him from an F from me, but wow. probably a, a low C, probably a D is what I would give Taven. You know, he's shown a, a few flashes here and there. Um, but the decision making was not there. Um, yeah, I think Soresby just outshined him to, you know, and he lost the starting spot after he he won it. I don't know. You know, I'm not going to try to rip him apart right now, <laughs> but there's always positives despite there being negatives. You saw he had a pretty good game, Taven, against uh, Indiana State at home. Mm-hmm. Indiana won that by, what, 30 or 40? That was a great right. game. He had a good game against Louisville. Uh, But there's lots of room for improvement, and with Soresby entering the portal, Taven's got a big offseason to work, and I think he's going to be ready to win next season. I'm going to give him a D, Mm. and I give this to him. He was the picked quarterback to start, and he lost that very quickly. He looked very shaky. He didn't command the offense very well in these tough matchups, and you see when Soresby came in, the whole flow of game was just different, Mm, and I felt like the offensive connection was good. And I wouldn't say it's a bad D. I think there's a lot of improvement, and I'm looking forward to see him grow over the offseason and towards next season. But definitely disappointed with how he ended up. What about uh, Brennan Sorsby from you guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah Sorsby. Uh, towards the end of the season, Sorsby definitely improved significantly. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the player that he was at the start of the season versus the end, night and day. I actually think that Sorsby looked, you know, decent at the end of the season. The connection to McCulley was pretty good. Um, a lot, a lot of times when, you know, they kind of switched things up, they were running the option. Soresby made the right reads. He got mm-hmm. a lot of yards with his legs. Um, I like him as a dual threat quarterback, and I think in a better situation, he really could have thrived. Finished the season with a three to one touchdown to interception ratio, which all things considered with a lot of those coming at the end of the season, he was pretty good in terms of making decisions. Um, semi-accurate. Mm-hmm. Not, Semi. not not the, the most accurate guy in, in college football, but Soresby surprised me by the end of the season. I somewhat liked watching him play. I would give Soresby B minus. B minus. Maybe a C, C plus. So I, I have the B minus for him as well. Uh, you know, there was the rumble at the start of the season. He got benched. Obviously, his morale was probably pretty low. Um, but I feel like he went out every game and he played consistent football on the offense. He commanded the offense very well. And it's going to be disappointing not having him next year. But I think he's going to do great things wherever he transfers. Um, but, you know, he's a redshirt freshman. I felt like he was very consistent. And I'm also looking at it. He was a 
three-star recruit out of high school. He was, what, the fourth quarterback on the team last year? Mm -hmm. And above all that, he came over to on top and was the starting quarterback for most of this year. Came close to a bowl game at the end. B minus, I think, is very fair. I I definitely want to give him a um, B minus. I think I think like you both said, like with him, I think honestly the best thing that happened to Brendan Sorsen was their offensive coordinator getting fired. Mm-hmm. Because once that happened, you clearly saw there was a pick in QB. We're gonna figure out how it's gonna our offense is gonna work around our QB. Or vice versa, our QB is going to work around our receivers. Donovan McCauley really stepped up to the plate when that happened. Um, so I feel like with Swarsby, I wish right now he had 15 touchdowns and five interceptions. I wish he could have got 20. I feel like that ratio would have been better for sure. Um, but four of those were rushing. And like you said, no, the he's a dual threat quarterback. He clearly is confident when he runs. Um, and I you're not surprised when he throws it far either. Um, so I feel like with him, him saying that he's entering the transfer portal is fine. But I think there's always a little something that I feel like maybe give IU one more one more go. I feel like it wouldn't be bad for him to give it a go. I think he really ended the season off really good with them. Um, but I feel like for him, it was a good QB choice for IU. I do. So then going in next, I got Donovan McCauley. Uh He showed really good improvement, I thought, from 22 to 23. Mm-hmm. It was a good leap, and it was things uh, Indiana loved to see. He was the best receiver by far, and there's going to be a huge hole on offense without him. You really saw Source be connected with him really well in the last few games. And we mentioned early in the podcast that IU was lacking that true offensive weapon, and McCoy did a great job really filling that position and taking a big command of the offense. He came up big, and he really served the position. I got to give him a B-plus on this, and we can talk more about it later, but it's going to be really hard filling his spot on the team on the offense this year. Indiana's going to have to really go out and find a a big receiver in the portal to uh, fill him up. I think what's interesting with him is no one really saw it coming, right? Like, I mean, I use QB Donovan McCulley. Now it's I use number one wide receiver Donovan McCulley. It's so random. Um, But I feel like, honestly, it was such a good pairing with him and Swordsby. I really feel like we kept saying, like, we need a duo. We need a duo. And everyone was like, okay, someone work with Jalen Lucas. And I think for Donovan McCulley, he really put his name out there. Um, And I feel like he did what he needed to do. I mean... 644 yards for the season I don't feel like is ideal for him um but six touchdowns and like like we saw with the Purdue game great catches like just makes it fun to watch I feel like watch him um so I would give him a B I feel like that's a solid start for him for really I feel like this is his first year as a true wide receiver out there on the field yeah I I think you look at McCulley and the leap that he made I he started off the year rough. He had some drops here and there. Wasn't always the most re- reliable guy. Mm-hmm. Take away that Maryland game where he had six receptions, 79 yards, and a touchdown. Really, really good game overall. He didn't really get going until Penn State. Right. And then since then, he that's where he got most of his touchdowns um, and, and just really stepped up. He's a great deep threat. He, he's pretty fast. His, his Like you said, Liv, his hands got better. Um to be able to produce at that level when, you know, you are pretty new to the receiver position overall, I think is great. And and I think, yeah, that is going to be a big loss for Indiana, um, losing him, especially considering wherever he goes, for him to really make himself successful, I think he needs to be that number one or number two guy somewhere to get his name out there and, and get you know, get the stats to show that he can be a reliable receiver. If he goes somewhere and he's like three or four or fifth guy, I don't know. We'll get to that later. But uh, overall, the grade I would give to Donovan McCauley, the drops bring him down a little bit. I'd say B plus, almost even an A, uh, just considering that he is so new to the receiver position. Mm -hmm. And now even looking at a bigger loss than McCauley, you look at Aaron Casey, Mm. who got Big Ten All-Defensive First Team yesterday, which is a major accomplishment. He was a huge defensive threat to all teams, but it was his fifth year at Indiana. He's got no more eligibility, Uh, but he developed more and more each year, and that's something you really saw with the defense all around. They just kept developing more and more, and it's going to be really tough not having him next year. I'm not sure what his plans are, whether he's going to try to go to the combine or he's calling it, but I got to give him an A+. And I think this is a given all around. Mm -hmm. He led the Big Ten in several defensive stats, and really was just a stud on defense. 
going to be bad not seeing him, but he's going to do great things wherever he goes. I mean, we really always said we really liked IU's defense. And I think when we said that, there was an emphasis on Aaron Casey's name throughout the whole season. I mean, I think he honestly led the team on and off the field. I think with him having 109 total like tackles is just a great number, I feel like, to even carry off the, into the season. Um, I even think for him, it wasn't even just tackles, but I feel like with like six sacks of the season, you know, three forced fumbles, like he was just all over the board and always there. Um, and so I feel like for him, he also set the tone for upcoming defensive players, um, like Philip Dunham, I feel like really took a good lead into that too. Um, so I feel like for Aaron Casey, that's going to be a hard loss in the linebacker position for IU to cover. Um, Cause I think also when you're at IU for a good amount of time or at whatever school, um, you grow with the school and like with the program and you can clearly see there was that culture with him that desire to really want to put IU on the map um so I feel like even though IU didn't have a truly good season I think he had the best season he probably could have had with the circumstances of being here yeah definitely I, Aaron Casey as an A plus season like you said mm -hmm. Dylan um it's really tough to find you know those inside linebackers who can be game changers like that you can have you know decent guys but when you have a guy that can go sideline to sideline sniff out tackles be able to you know really read an offense well know when he can get into the backfield stuff like that he's a special talent he is a very very special talent um and like you said Dylan who knows what the future holds for him um you know one of the best defenders in the big 10 he's the type of guy that you know I the inside linebacker position in the NFL is probably the most shallow positional group there is in terms of of the top guys that it's very top heavy who knows you know if things go his way we might see him in there one day but yeah Aaron Casey will go down in the IU history books as one of the For better sure. defenders in, definitely, in IU definitely. history and then I got EJ Williams on here and I, I would say it was a pretty big disappointment this year with EJ mm -hmm. Williams. Uh, you know, he was a four-star at high school. He played three years at Clemson. He had a really good freshman year at Clemson playing with Trevor Lawrence as quarterback. Mm -hmm. So you look at how he played Lawrence, you're expecting a lot out of him. Only had 244 reception yards over his last four games, which was pretty solid. But the rest of the season was a complete failure. Yep. But those last four games with the 244 reception yards is the reason I'm not going to give him an F. He finished the season strong when IU needed to. I'm going to give him a D on this. You know, it's really hard to place it because he did come strong for those last four games. But he was MIA for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. He might have a graduate transfer in him. I'm not sure what his future holds. I don't think I use missing much from uh, if he walks out the door. I think it was pretty disappointing um, having him so hyped up. And I think IU does that a lot, um, hypes up transfers coming from big schools. Oh, my gosh, you know, wide receiver coming from Clemson. He's going to be insane. And then, you know, now we're like, wait, where is he? Um, hey, you there. Um, so I think it was pretty disappointing. I have to give him probably like a D minus pushing an F for sure. Um I don't think he impacted IU at all, especially not what they were hoping he was going to do. Um, and I think even for him also, like, when you start to fall in the back, when there's Donovan McCauley and them stepping up to the plate, I mean, no one's really having their eyes on you anymore. If you're not producing and you're not going out there and helping the team, then I can't give you, you know, anything better than what you're showing. So I do think with him it's pretty disappointing. I don't think it's a big loss if IU loses him. I think it was kind of one of those hyped up transfers that we hoped would change the program and then just did it yeah uh you saw uh you know in the games that he did play in there's just a lot of miscommunication mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you don't know really whose fault that is but one thing that comes to mind in that michigan state game the play that ended the game was an intentional grounding call on mm -hmm. soresby he threw it to the end zone thinking williams was going to go to the end zone and williams ran a hitch and literally, I mean, Soresby threw the ball 20 yards in front of him. It was just completely the wrong route. Ended the game on that play because of the intentional grounding and the 10-second runoff. Um, and uh, when you see things like that and you see the season that he had, especially at the beginning, yeah, I, if he walks, I don't think it's going to impact Indiana mm -hmm. too much. But, I mean, they already lost McCulley. How thin can you get? 
you know, and, and still be a, a viable team. I don't know. I think that Indiana needs to do their best to to keep as many people as they can. But who knows? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I feel like at that point, whether you keep them or not, Indiana's not going to be a contending team next year. They're not going to be at the top of the Big Ten, especially with the expansion. I think Indiana's more so looking for that receiver who's going to be here mm-hmm. for three years maybe and really change the offense, look for a guy you can bring in as a freshman or a sophomore, maybe you didn't have a good season in their team, transfer the portal, and develop them the way you want to. And that's how you're going to grow a program, not not seniors. We're going to play for one year yep. on the team. Yep. Who else you guys want to touch on? Um, I mean, I think a big one, too, was Trent Howland. Mm-hmm. I really was impressed with him come to the end of the season. I think for... For him to be able to step up and end up leading the team in rushing yards is great. I think that we saw a lot of the guys start to step up towards the end of the season, which is, you know, not really ideal. We hope you do that the whole season. But I think we're him with him finishing with around 350 yards, 76 carries, two touchdowns is not bad. Was really only starting the end of the season. Um, again, leading rushing. I think we thought that was going to be Jalen Lucas's name um, that we're saying, and it wasn't. So I feel like for him, he was an underdog going into the season. No one really talked about it, and I love an underdog story. Um, so I feel like for him, it will be a hard loss for IU. But I want to definitely give him, I think, like a B-plus for the end of the season um, and how he was able to adapt with the whole thing. I think it's definitely hard that IU is le- that he's leaving IU, though, because I do think he would have a lot of potential staying here. You know, I would give him—it's it's hard to put it— It's Mm -hmm. a really big loss. He was IU's leading rusher, but then again, 350 yards rushing is not a whole lot, especially in a in a Big Ten conference. He's got two years of eligibility left, and it needs to be IU bringing in a good running back in the portal. Jalen Lucas really didn't work out. He was too small. He couldn't get Mm -hmm. through the pile in those conference games at the beginning. He succeeded in those non-conference games, but it really wasn't enough. And it's hard because he really came up big in the end of the season. Trent Howland. Mm I'd give him a B minus. You know, you look at the way the offense was controlled at the beginning of the season. The receiving game wasn't there. They tried running the ball a lot, and you'd expect Trent Howland to come up bigger the entire season, and it really didn't happen. I think a B minus is a good grade. Yeah, Trent Howland, he's huge running back. Uh, I believe he's six two, six three, and very quick for that size. He's he was able to get to the edge pretty decently, but. I don't know. I I think even with that, the mix of skill, speed, and size, I would say he almost underproduced for what his potential is this year. I think that he could be a a pretty good back uh, to be able to come in and you know finish off the season, also leading the team in yards per carry. Um, I don't think he gave Indiana and and. Not to his own fault. I mean, there's a lot of things going on in this offense. Mm-hmm. I think that he can be better. And I think that a team that could use him better is going to get a good back. But in terms of his season for Indiana, I gave Soresby a B minus, I think it was. I don't think that Howland had a good, as good of a season as Soresby. So I'll give him a C plus. That's solid. So now moving away from the grades and kind of looking at the transfer portal, you know, head coach Tom Allen was let go. And as expected, a lot of guys that he recruited are going to leave. Looking first, you've got Dexter Williams. Uh And this is a guy, you could see this from a mile away. He was tucked behind two other quarterbacks, young quarterbacks as well. He didn't have a future with the team. Uh, He wasn't going to see him playing time this year. He wasn't going to see it next year. I wish him the best. I follow him on Twitter. I see he's been getting tons of (laughs) offers from from lower-level Division I schools. I really do wish him the best. I want to see him succeed somewhere where he'll get playing time. I don't know how much he can succeed after the injury he had. He didn't play at all this year. I don't think he played one snap this year. Right. That's a whole year off of football. Maybe he'll get another year extra eligibility from injury, but I don't see much of a future for him. I mean, I understand your point in the sense of, so with Dexter, I understand that the injury is hard. And I think for any player, it's really hard to come back from that, especially with a year off. But you do what you can with it, and you still have eligibility. I think with when you see Mike Penix, for example, and clearly had really hard injuries while he was here at IU, but now you see what he's doing for Washington, potential Heisman. So I feel like it just really, 
depends on how you want to take the rest of the seasons in Ella's trilogy you have and what you can do with it. I think for him, I don't think IU was the best choice to stay here any longer. I think with the potential of Taven staying, I think especially they're going to work on him really hard in the offseason to really get him to be the quarterback that IU want to see. Um, if he leaves, then he leaves, and then, you know, they'll find someone else. But I still feel like that person will be above Dexter. Um, so I don't blame him for wanting to leave, but I do think with those injuries, take that potential that you still have for eligibility um, and produce as much as you can. But like you said, wish the best for him. Um, I think it was a smart choice for him to want to leave. Yeah, like you said, Dylan, there's not too much more to say about it. I mean, the type of quarterback that he is and the injuries that he mm-hmm. got, that's usually – you know, a killer yep. to, to potential and, and a career. I wish, wish the best for him. I hope that he's able to overcome it. Uh, and I think getting a chance as, you know, the main guy in maybe a lower level school or any school uh, for that matter, who knows? You know, he had flashes. He right. Had flashes. Yeah. And, you know, it's a fresh start, too. You look at a, a lot of these guys, they struggle at the Division One level and they go down and they kind of have a, a yeah. comeback mm-hmm. rebound season. And that's mm-hmm. what they need, a fresh start, a humbling experience down at a school like that. So wish him the best. But then you look at Philip Dunham, another big loss. Mm -hmm. He was only a sophomore. He's one of the best defensemen in IU. 53 tackles for three interceptions this year. Only as a sophomore was really incredible. He's got two years of eligibility left, and I think he's going to be a really big piece to whatever Power 5 school he ends up at. And it's another big hole for Indiana to fill. Uh, You saw how strong their defense was. I'm I'm fairly confident they can fill these defensive spots once again. It's going to be a lot of use in the portal. I'm honestly really surprised that Philip Dunham wanted to leave because I really feel like, like you said, like the numbers don't lie. And I truly feel like he produced really good this season. I feel like, you know, he was not really talked about much, but when his name brought, got brought up, it never disappeared again for the rest of the season. Uh, so I feel like for him, he worked good with, with the staff here and they put him out there and he did what he had to do and he was a good defensive player. I think I am surprised that, He's not taking the opportunity to have one more good year here, potentially, um, to really set the tone at IU and potentially become like a leader for this team and another Aaron Casey. Um, I think if he feels like the best bet for him would to be go somewhere else, that's fine. Um, not even speaking on just him. I think in general, what I think is interesting, though, is I think a lot of these players have like, you know, a, like you said, a flash of a good year. And then they're like, yep. Like, I'm ready. Like, Alabama, I'm here. Like, you know, and they take these teams and they're like, I did so good at IU. I could be playing, you know, for Alabama and then I'm playing for the Chiefs. Like, you need to do a little bit more than produce for five games against, you know, teams in the Big Ten, unfortunately. Um, So I think, not even speaking on just him, but I think a lot of them take that for granted playing at IU. um, That you're still playing for a solid Big Ten team. Um, So if he wants to leave, I think that if he finds the potential somewhere else, that's awesome. Um, But I do think it wouldn't hurt him to stay one more year and kind of get solid with one team. Yeah, it's it is tough. But also you take a look at some of the positional groups for Indiana. I think the secondary was the positional group that saw the biggest decline as the year went on. So, I mean, you know, maybe this is the type of thing where they can benefit both parties involved. Maybe Dunham needs a fresh start. Maybe Indiana needs uh, some new people in there. Uh, Got plenty of turnovers this year overall for the secondary. So it is big loss. But also, I think that is another one of the deepest positional groups that Indiana has. They have a lot of defensive backs. Um, but of course, when you lose, you know, a, a lead starter like that, it's, it's never good news. Um, you know, maybe he can be like a Desan McCullough and go somewhere else and, and be pretty good. He's, mm-hmm. he's had a good season over in Oklahoma. So I think he has a, another guy who has potential. And there are so many guys on this Indiana team who are talented. Mm-hmm. They are talented football players all over this team it was just so tough the coaching everything involved for it all just to to flow together to be a a cohesive team so as unfortunate as it is for indiana these guys are going to go someplace and and probably have pretty good seasons next year i also would add that i would have full faith in whoever they bring in as the head coach and i feel the head coach would be smart to maybe sit down with a couple of these players that they have faith in and see you know what didn't the program meet for their standards? Mm -hmm. Why do you want to leave? Is there anything I can do to keep you staying here? You know, when Archie Miller left IU, Shafino was going to withdraw, and Mike Woodson sat down with him, went to all of his games, figured out what he could do to keep him from leaving. 
I think that's something you do with Philip Dunham. Two years of eligibility is one of the biggest defensemen in IU. Mm-hmm. See what you can do to keep him from leaving, and you never know. You know, once you keep him, maybe some of the other guys will stay. Maybe more transfers will come in. Mm-hmm. I think it's just the gift, the gift that keeps on giving. I mean, you see it, though, with, like, Aaron Casey, for example. Like, he's been here for, what you say, five, five to six five years. years. And so, like, and this was his best year was this year. So you need to take the opportunity to actually get coached by a team and fit in with a team and become a leader on a team. And I think that's what was really hard for a lot of the transfers came in. They thought they were going to come in as seniors and be, like, God's gift in creation, and they just weren't, you know? Um, so I feel like take the opportunity to be solid with a team. I don't think it's, you know, really the best look when you hop, you're hop, you hopping around. Um, so I feel like for many of them, take this opportunity. But like you said, though, I mean, with a new coach coming in, that changes everyone's perspective on what they want to do. Right. So we already touched on Howland and Dexter and Soresby. McCauley earlier. Mm -hmm. Anyone else you guys want to touch on in the portal? I mean, uh, just the thing that I'm looking at is, you know, you lost almost their entire offensive line. Um, Mm -hmm. And the offensive line, I think, down the stretch was playing pretty good for Indiana. There were some times where in big moments they didn't necessarily hold up for as long as they maybe could have, should have. But there are going to be a lot of new guys Mm -hmm. coming in this next year. And IU got a new offensive line coach this year. uh, And to lose all that progress that you made, that it looked like you made by the end of the season, that's just another X to put on this, you know, upcoming season for Indiana next year. It is, that's pretty unfortunate. Yeah. So now kind of looking at the whole season, how it went, you know, we sat down here week one discussing mm-hmm. our expectations. Expectations weren't high for all of us. Similar spots. Just looking at it, I would say with the whole season, I'm fairly disappointed. Mm-hmm. But I can't say I didn't expect it. You know, Indiana, they didn't go out and bring in like many team changing players. No one expected Indiana to go out and be the top of the Big Ten You've Mm -hmm. got a battle of redshirt freshman quarterbacks with really no experience. We didn't expect much. uh, But despite the lack of wins and the lack of success, I give major props to the defense. Defense was really strong, and it really brought a bright side and a a plus to the games every day. Every week, you knew the defense was going to go out there and do their best, and they really put IU in, in a chance to win these games in a good spot. It's going to be hard to fill the shoes of all the defensemen who left or are done with eligibility, but I'm confident the coaches are going to fill those spots. And, you know, it's a new coaching staff as well. A new head coach awaits. But I I expect transfers to start rolling into IU really soon. Mm -hmm. I think the head coach is going to be hired with any day now, any minute. Transfer Porter's going. Clock is ticking. It'll happen. I think what's interesting, like, with the overall season is if you just want to base it off what they did with being three and nine overall, one and eight conference, never won an away game. No, like you would not want, that's not what you're showing off, right? That's not what I use using right now to recruit um, and to try to gain a team. Um, But I think, like I said earlier, the problem is though, is you hype up all these players to and expect them to change a program. And that's just not how football works. You can't have just one person take over the whole team, and it's just a success. You don't see that with Michigan. You don't see that with Oregon. And that's why they're succeeding, because their overall team is thriving and is flowing. Um, I think that's a problem when you recruit a bunch of, like you said, like seniors and super seniors to come here, and this is run year, and like, go for it. It's just not how it works. Um, So I feel like for IU, looking back at this season, with your three closest games, one being a four overtime against Akron, One's against Indiana State University and then Wisconsin. I don't think it was much to show. And like you said, I do think it was pretty disappointing. I did have them winning, though, a lot of those games. <laughs> and now I understand why. But um, I will say, though, it wasn't the worst, but it definitely was a disappointing season to be a Hoosier fan. Yeah, I think um, overall, mm-hmm. the start of the season, I— I don't remember what my exact prediction was. I was between two and three wins overall. So they sat right around there. Uh, So I was definitely not surprised by this season. But I'll I'll say this much. To go from, you know, morale was low after the Akron game, even though it was a win. 
morale was low after the Maryland game. <laughs> morale was very low after Michigan. Even lower after Rutgers mm-hmm. because people thought that they could maybe win that game. Yep. To then go into Penn State, make it a very, very close game against the number 10 team in the country, go and win the next week, and th- then you start to see that spark. Right. So close against Illinois, so close against Michigan State, so close against Purdue. You have to think that there was just a little thing missing to put this team over the hump. Uh, all things considered, to have that many close games, and, and you know, it's always coulda, shoulda, woulda, mm-hmm. to have that many close games with the team that they had, with all the situations that they were going through, I think that they were just a, a little bit away. I can't put my finger on exactly what it is, what they were missing. Probably a little bit of everything. But, <laughs> that, you know, that all adds up to to not that much. But I just think, I don't know, I think they were there to to be a somewhat respectable football team. And it's it's just unfortunate that they came up short so many mm-hmm. times. Mm-hmm. I totally agree with you. And it, it's really hard because you look at next year. The Big Ten's expanding, you know, UCLA, USC, Oregon, Washington. These are really good football schools. And you've got the entire Indiana team leaving. Mm -hmm. I can't picture Indiana having a stronger defense than this year. The offense offense can't get any worse. Mm -hmm. We'll put Mm -hmm. it that way. But I think it's going to be really difficult for IU to rebound for next year. I think you're looking more so long-term, the bigger picture, bringing in a good coaching staff, bringing in that real head coach. And getting some good recruits, getting some good transfers. Can I see IU grabbing three or four conference wins next year? Maybe. I can't see more than that. I think for next year, it's going to be a proving year as for the coach. I think that I don't really honestly expect a bunch of great recruits and transfers to come in this upcoming season. I think that that's probably just something they're going to have to just accept, that it might be some lower starred recruits you might only have some you know two star three stars i don't see another five star quarterback wanting to be here but i think it's just going to come down to what coach comes in and what they do and then from there you build on being able to recruit a little bit better but if you pick a coach that doesn't really have the best background or has only ever been an offensive coordinator and hasn't ever actually coached a team in college it's going to be very hard for you to pull in more recruits and i think that's why they're really lucky that Taven hasn't yet said that he was transferring. I think that's a sparkle of hope for them Um, because I really feel like next year he can truly step up and really be a solid leader on this team and a solid QB1 out of fall camp. They know who their QB is. We don't have this discussion again. Um, But I feel like it's really going to come down to who they hire. I mean, and they have good candidates. I feel like it's solid people that people are hoping, predicting, maybe falling into. Um, But there were a lot of cuts this football season. So I think across the board, it could be for anybody. But, I mean, it's hard. It's going to have to be a coach that's like, I'm willing to change a program and have it take time. And I think IU has to be patient with them if they want a solid season in the next two years. I think it's really difficult with the coaching hire. I'm not going to throw out who I think it'll be because I have no idea (laughs) who it could be. Uh, You know, everyone's saying, oh, Antoine Randallel, he's going to be the coach. Well, his highest coaching experience is doing, what, two or three years as a receivers coach for a – non-playoff team yet Mm -hmm. so that's that i mean i'd rule out rod carey i think in the future he could be a a head coach with iu or an interim or an interim head coach i don't see it happening this quick no um the rumors were shut down in john gruden (laughs) and i don't think iu is going to bring in a big name coach i saw that donors are going to donate a few million towards this coaching hire but realistically what i see it's not gonna be a big name coach and then everyone's going to be like, oh, that's a terrible hire. Because everyone's expecting IU yeah, to bring right. in. Everyone Diaz Everyone Sanders. is expecting John Gruden, <laughs> Antoine Randallel, one of these big-name guys to be the next head coach. It's not going to happen. Everyone's going to be upset. And IU Twitter football is going to be going crazy. <laughs> that, that's just what I feel. I mean, I think I'm just so worried for this coach to come in because if you even lose that first game— these fans are turning on yet. <laughs> like, if your name if your name isn't <laughs> Antoine Randall or John Gruden, you will be getting flamed you before you even you step in Bloomington. You will. And l- I'm sorry to who the coach is going to be. <laughs> you have a lot of adversity to come across. Absolutely. You've got a lot of angry fans who deserve to be angry. 
Mm-hmm. They deserve and, but it. I think the thing is, though, is, like, the problem is I understand you want to keep, like, Hoosier culture and keep, like, IU alum in the program. Leo. But, <laughs> but you don't have to always have a head coach who's played here. Let me just emphasize that one more time. You don't need a head coach that has played here to have a good IU culture keep going. I think you can have a coach that knows about IU's program, but let them learn and change the program into their own. If you have someone who's coming in, I'm going to keep the exact same around, the same culture around, the same program, same practices, same staff. You can't change and become better. IU is going to have to hire someone that I feel like has experience in maybe a different conference that can bring perspective from different places, playing different teams, playing top teams like Alabama and Clemson and Oregon and oh, I've coached Bo Nix. This is how I would approach quarterback position. Like, bring in experience from different places, but if you have someone who only knows IU's program, you can't change much because that's all you know. So I feel like for this coach coming in, I say take the bull by its horns, do what you feel like is best for the team. You're going to get hate for it because IU fans expect you to now go undefeated. That's just how it is. Um, But I think even the potential of getting four to five wins, honestly, any growth of improvement with a new coach is a plus. Um, just prepared to have an empty stadium if you're down in fourth quarter. Or at halftime. <laughs> or at halftime. <laughs> yeah. I think overall, honestly, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Rod Carey. Um, I think you look back, Tom Allen was made the head coach after a season of being, I believe, the defensive coordinator for Indiana. Um, so I, it, it would really wouldn't surprise me. I think it would fit the bill. Um he was able to improve the offense a little bit. I, I think no matter who you get next year, lot to stuff to lot of stuff to do uh, on your to do list. So yes. um, I don't know. I don't know if there's anybody who I think could come in here and really make a change that fast. But then again, Tom Allen came in in uh, in I guess what was that? Probably is his fourth season technically because mm-hmm. he came in in 2017. So 17, 18, 19, yeah, his fourth season turned it around. Who knows? Anything can happen. Anything can happen. I mean, you see with Deion Sanders, you know, went to Colorado. Well, you know, he went Chain. there. He had, and what, four wins the whole year? Four wins the, the whole year. The big name doesn't always mean you're going to win. I but the I think the thing is, though, is he went in and completely changed the culture of the program. Oh, completely. And that's what you have to do as a new coach. You make it now your team. He went in. He changed it. It's not even Colorado anymore. It's Deion Sanders' team. That's what you have to do to produce and put your name out there and put your team on the map. yes. That decline was a hard decline for them, but you're still talking about them, and you're still excited to see them play next year, and that's why you need to do. Right, I agree. Anything else you guys want to touch on today? That's all I got on this season. It was <laughs> it was a long one. Uh, there were some ups and downs, mostly downs, <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna end it off with my favorite moment of the season. Okay. Mm, which ahead. was uh, against Penn State. When Indiana got a late interception, I believe it was Drew Aller's first mm. pick he threw of the season for Penn State, and IU was like low key set up to win the game. There's a lot of hope in that moment, mm-hmm. but uh, quickly went away. But <laughs> there was hope in that moment. Like, what's think... your favorite moment? <laughs> uh, I mean, this is the thing. Four overtimes is a long game, right? But it was fun to like see them rush the field. It was fun to get that win and. I think a, a overtime game is always fun to watch. And I think and even though no one is in the stands, there's a lot of people watching on TV still. It wasn't that late. It wasn't that everyone's bedtime. Um, but I'll say that Akron game for overtime win um, was just awesome to watch. It was fun energy. I would have to go the Wisconsin win at home. Yeah. Uh, my parents were there. I was with all my friends, my parents, their parents. Uh, kind of getting to see that culture and everyone mm-hmm. get together for that one conference win was, was really special. And... You know, you get to appreciate wins when your team is really yep. bad. I'm a Chicago yep. sports fan. I You get to appreciate it. <laughs> um, but it was really special. And everything worked so well that game. And it was just like, like it wasn't that good of a game. But, mm-hmm. like, it's going to stick with me for a while. Because you remember how fun it is to win after you lose so much. But that's what we've got for today. It's been a great season working with you guys. Great getting to know you. And uh, we appreciate everyone who's listened in this, uh, this yes. season. For sure. For sure. Till next time, Pack the Rock Podcast.